first question from Kyle Newman. Go ahead, Kyle. Hey, buddy. Good to see you. Uh, how's Trevor Story doing? Any update on him and where he's at? He's doing great. Feels good. Uh, had an MRI. Uh, came back clean. You know, that made everybody feel better. Uh, most notably, Trevor. But he's going to get on the field today. He's going to take ground balls. Uh, he's going to be active. He's not going to uh, throw or, or hit today. I think that's going to come in the next day or two uh, to build up uh, for the rest of the week and, and potentially be ready for, for Tuesday in Miami. And I know a, a couple of years ago he had that little flare up there in 2018, but he just oh, he was only out a couple of games. Is this any concern with him? or Because he had said at the time that he occasionally gets tightness in his elbow. It's just something that you need to monitor. And if it does flare up, it's just a minor thing or any thoughts there? Yeah, I think you're right. A couple years ago, I think in 2018, I think he missed six days or six games. I have to look back. It was in September when we were making the run with the Dodgers for the pennant. And uh, we had to uh, take a little step back with Trevor. This is very similar. Uh, you know, for, you know, Trevor indicated to, to me and Keith. So, again, uh, you know, we made that throw. Felt a little uh, soreness as the game went on. You know, I'm starting to tighten up a little bit more and tighten up. And then over the next uh, 72 hours, it, it started to get better. So, you know, we wanted to be you know, a little overly cautious here and, uh, you know, decided with, you know, the off day yesterday and the off day coming Monday, it was probably best to, to make sure that we let the whole joint quiet down. And, and they'll be, you know, ready to go hopefully 100% by Tuesday. So, uh, I mean, I, you know, we worry about all our players uh, all the time about a lot of different things, and this is no different. But I think in the big scheme of things, Kyle, you know, he's going to be he's going to be fine and, and be a durable player. And so then you expect him back uh, when his IL stint is, is up, or, or I, I, yeah, I, I think so. I'm, we're fairly optimistic on that. And one final one for me on Alan Trejo. You guys brought him back up today. What are you hoping for from him? you know, out of, you know, in his next stint here up in the big leagues. Well, I think with, with Alan, he gives us, uh, with with Rogers and Hanson, uh, three young middle infielders who, uh, you know, give us coverage in the middle of the diamond. And with Hanson able to go to center field and, and Trejo able to move around the diamond, it gives us some infield flexibility uh, when, we, when we need to make moves throughout the game. You know, whether it's a, a double switch, a pinch hit, uh, you know, doing something maybe for defense, uh, you know, trail uh, adds to that mix of, you know, giving us uh, defense and uh, position uh, flexibility. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Thomas Harding. Hey, buddy. First of all, good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon, Thomas. All right. Secondly, um, bringing up Trejo, just wanted to check, uh, do you still want to – see Rogers in extended duty at shortstop, or do you look at maybe since Trejo's the natural shortstop, you look at Rogers back at second? What is what is the thought with that? Well, I think we'll, we'll uh, you could see Hampson in shortstop, Thomas. Okay. Shortstop too. I don't think there's any, you know, what we're going to do until Trev comes back these next six games. I think you can see potentially all three guys there. Uh, you'd like to see you know, Hanson's been a little, uh, in a, uh, actually a lot of our guys have been in a slump over the last week to 10 days or a couple weeks. So, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, Hanson, Rogers, if we pop Trejo in there, they can get a couple hits and, you know, help us score. Um, as far as uh, just the little, small, minuscule sample size we've seen of Rogers at short, have you seen anything that, uh, that that you can hang your hat on as far as that's concerned? Do you see him? Uh, because we've seen some good work at second base already in that small sample size. Is he better at second or short? Or well, uh, you know, I think he's gotten you know the most reps the last couple of years at, at short. At, I'm sure I'm sorry at second, but you know he's a natural shortstop, so I know. Comfort level there uh, with Brendan is fine. Just like if we put Hams in there, there's a comfort level because their entire life they've been in that position more than any other, so they feel good there. I think in, in Pittsburgh, Brendan wasn't really tested a great deal. There was a one double play ball that 
he took himself uh, and the runner beat it at first. I think if he was to do that over again, he'd probably get in, you know, probably better position to throw immediately while he was touching the ball. I think, you know, with Brendan, I think the thing that he's learning, and I think Trey Ho's learning as well, I think can't be sort of there now already, is that the speed of the big league game is different than the minor league game. And I think Brendan, you know, could appreciate that in the last couple of years being in spring training. I think that was something that, you know, he mentioned that, you know, the balls hit harder, the, the, the hitters run faster. You know, just the game moves faster than Marlin because, you know, the players are better and they're quicker, they're stronger. So um, I think he's, you know, going to continue to learn that every, every inning that he plays on defense, and that's a good thing. But he's aware of it. Okay, a couple. For, but first on the um, infielders with Hampson and Rogers and um, McMahon, Fuentes, do you feel that going forward – this will be kind of an amoeba-like infield where, you know, you'll, you'll move guys around. Or would you like to have a guy or two at one spot? What, what do you think of your infield in, in, in the future, not just now, but in future? Uh, it, it depends on how they, how, they, you know, how they play and whether they can really solidify a position. I think with, you know, with this present group, I think you're going to continue to see, uh, you know, some changes you know, on a daily basis. Of the lineup. I think you could see also what we've been doing now. <clears throat> if, uh, you know, we might be able to, depending on the game, you know, defensive first base with Josh uh, for one of our first basemen. We'll see how that goes. But, you know, Matt and, and Josh both have shown the ability to, to move from, you know, one position to the next in game and not and not lose anything. We won't lose anything in the defense, and it doesn't affect their offense. I think with, with Brendan, you know, depending with uh, Trevor, when he comes back, I mean, Trevor obviously will play shortstop in no other position. Crone will only play first base. Uh, Adams will only play first base. Uh, you know, Mac, depending on who's in the lineup, uh, could play second or third, and, and Josh is going to play either uh, third or first. Uh, you, you could maybe see Josh uh, in the outfield, uh, but that'd have to be something that we'd have to discuss later. But uh, in Hampson, you'll see him at potentially center field, second base, or shortstop. But, you know, again, I think that the moving parts is sort of, you know, the thing, of, uh, thing in the future in all of baseball. You know, we've talked about it a lot. I don't want to repeat myself with some of these players that we've talked about, the Kiki Hernandez, the Chris Taylors. Max Muncy, Chris Bryant, uh, uh, Dubon in San Francisco, Slater moves. Around. I don't want to keep going, Thomas, but I will if you want. No, that's okay. But if I can get some injury updates first with Ben Bowden being um, s sent down, is it more just get him regular action now? Where, where is he right now? First health wise, second pitch wise. Well, he's healthy. Uh, into a simulated game. He's thrown uh, in you know two ball games in. Albuquerque, uh, he's healthy. Uh, we had to make a decision whether to bring him back to the major league club or option him out. I think we can now bring him back to here. It's obviously heavy right handed, uh, but Ben and Lucas Gilbert are both down in Albuquerque uh, pitching, getting reps at, uh, at that level. Uh, you know, Ben didn't pitch a lot in AAA. Uh, Lucas has not pitched in AAA. He was an A ball last year, but uh, you know, we like his arm, we like Ben's arm. You know, there's so many guys uh, across all of baseball, Thomas, who didn't play last year. Uh, Connor Joe, uh, who we sent down, didn't play last year. He's got to get at bats. So, uh, you know, this is a situation where those three fellas need to get their need to get their reps in, need to uh, play regularly. Uh, so when we do need them, uh, they're they're ready to go and not uh, and not victim to you know not playing a lot. Last one for me, um, Chris Owings, where does he stand now as far as working his way back from the injury? Yeah, every day uh, making strides, uh, you know, getting closer to baseball activity. I know that he's playing catch, uh, throwing, which is a which is good thing. We don't have a bat in his hand yet, but uh, as each day and week goes on, he's getting closer, but he's feeling good. He's He's on the baseball field. He's running. He's now playing catch. 
the shagging. Uh, he's, he's doing some things. He's doing, he's doing well. He's on target. And just to make sure he's in Arizona, right? He's here with us. Oh, he's here. Okay. All right. Thank you, buddy. Yep. Nick Grope. Uh, yeah, hey, buddy, uh, we're breaking up a little bit. I hope this comes out okay, but um, on the... Loud and clear, Nick, you're brand new. Uh, awesome. Um, for th on today's moves, just two quick questions. Um, what do you need to see from Connor Joe going forward for his return, uh, before his return? And then um, on the flip side, what does Matt Adams provide then, you know, in if it's if it's an either or with the, with the two of them? I think with, uh, with Connor, I think, you know, for him, like I mentioned earlier, he didn't play a lot last year. Uh, I, we felt at this point that, you know, he was going to, you know, sort of be in our bench, get considered Crohn's probably going to get most of the work. And at first base, you know, we could keep Connor uh, as a situation to, you know, play the outfield and uh, against a left-handed starter uh, to get Chuck and Taffy today against a tough lefty. That could still happen in the future, but I think it was more important that that he got, uh, you know, regular at bats right now. Here it is uh, in June, and I think he's got uh, 50 at bats, maybe if that. Uh, he needs to play and needs to, again, I think continue. What he needs to show us is continue what he's done uh, in his minor league career, uh, which was, uh, you know, pretty stellar in 19. And uh, you know what he did maybe when he first came up. He had the on base, uh, you know, had the on base path. Uh, with a lot of walks, uh, you know, the walks sort of decreased over the last uh, couple of weeks. Got up to a hot start with the bat, got some knocks. Uh, you know, I, I still think power in there. I know it didn't show up here. I think he had a double and three singles. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember. How many hits did he get? Nine? Ten hits? But uh, he just needs a play, Nick. I think. Yeah, with Adams. Uh, I think there is still an element of danger from the other from another dugout. You saw that the, the Pirates walked him, I think, in the fifth inning intentionally to get to Rogers uh, with an open base. Uh, you know, he's got he's got uh, power hasn't really exhibited yet in the in the small sample of games uh, that he's played here. Get some homers in the alternate site down in Arizona prior to us calling them up, and we get four homers down there uh, in that competition uh, in, in April. But I, I still think there's a there's a little bit of a professional at bat in there, experienced pinch hitter, a left handedness helps our bench, and uh, you know you play first base and we get back to the of a left handed hitter against a tough right handed pitcher. Gotcha. Thanks, buddy. Okay. Go to Danielle. Hey, buddy. Uh, I saw Scott Oberg out there um, while Trevor Story was taking rounders. Um, I know he's been helping the relievers, but has he kind of been taking on more of an expanded role? You know, uh, you know, probably better better question for Scott. Uh, but I do know that he's been around. He's engaging with players. Uh, I do know that our scouting department uh, sent him out to watch a local high school pitcher here the other day. Uh, so he's uh, he's. Uh, spreading his wings a little bit in a lot of different areas, but I, I can't really be specific, Danielle. Again, probably a better question for Scott if you guys want to get him on a Zoom call at some point moving forward, but he's around um, staying active with the team. Uh, you know, you know, his family's here. They, they, they have a, a, a place here. They decided to spend, I think, the summer in Colorado, and you know, it'll, be a, it'll be in and around the team. And some of the other responsibilities that uh, he might be doing, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not quite aware of, but I do know that he went and uh, watched a high school pitcher uh, out at Regis the other day. So, you know, he's, he's doing his thing. Thank you. All right, we'll go to Owen Perkins and finish up with Mark Stout. Owen, go ahead. Uh, hey, buddy. I um, wanted to follow up on Connor. Um, I'd wanted to ask you before this move came up, um, how you know when a guy like him is ready, you know, he's shown this, the ability to succeed at the big league level, but when does he have, how do you know when he has the ability to succeed from the bench and without the regular playing time that a younger guy may need? You know, it's, it's, I don't know if you ever know, but I do know that, the, you know, the at-bats that he takes, 
uh, you know, from our scouting reports, from our video, from what we saw in spring training, what we saw here we like, right? I think there's strike zone awareness. I think there's strike zone discipline. So in that regard, and I think you look at his career minor league numbers, uh, you know, the on-base percentage, the walk percentage, uh, you know, are all really solid. Uh, that you can project that in the in the big leagues to a certain extent. Uh, what you what you have to come to find is whether his swing plays in the big leagues. You know, whether uh, his swing and his approach uh, plays in the big leagues and. You know, I think he got 15 at bats with the Giants a few years ago, and I think he's got 50 with us. That's 65 at bats, not a lot. Uh, you know, probably 10 or more of them have been pinch hits, and pinch hitting is the toughest job on the, on, on the baseball team to come, you know, off the bench in the sixth, seventh, eighth inning, ninth inning, and, and face a major league arm. It's tough. Uh, but I think he's. Uh, He's wired the right way to do it. He's got a good head on his shoulders. He's calm. He doesn't panic. Uh, now it's just a matter of whether, you know, over time we see those, uh, you know, his talents, you know, show up in a, in a big league game. It's been a little tough pinch hitting for him. Uh, but, you know, it's not unexpected because it's a hard job. But I think more than anything, you know, he needs to play at this point, you know, June, June 1st. He needs to play. Uh, in the event that we do bring him back, at least he has some at bats under his belt and feels good about uh, being in the batter's box, comfort level, his swing, his bat speed, all those things. You can't, you can't sit here and just you know, not play. So uh, this gives him an opportunity to play, uh, you know, for a time being in Albuquerque. Uh, you know, Crown and Adams and Fuentes will, will play first base here. And then we'll see what happens. He came up when, when Crum got hurt. I don't wish anybody to get hurt, but we know that we have some guys down in AAA who uh, have been here before, whether it's uh, Hilliard, whether it's now Connor Joe, whether it's you know, a couple of these pitchers, lefties we just sent down. Uh, you know, we have some guys down there that uh, we know, uh, we know what they can do, but they got to play. They got to play and they got to, they got to, you know, continue to hone their skills. I got two more for you on a quick one. Um, you had mentioned, I think, last week that the way the roster was formed at that point, Rodgers would be at shortstop with Hampson the next in line. Um, with Trejo coming up, does that change? I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, you could see Allen getting the start, but, uh, you know, you know, it, you know, if Rodgers, uh, you know, plays tonight and gets three hits, he'll probably play tomorrow. If, you know, Rogers has been a little bit of a funk. If he needs a day, we might start him out. So I'm not going to, you know, Owen, I'm not going to tell you who's going to start tomorrow or who's going to start Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, or Sunday. Let's just see how they do and how they're swinging and how they play. And then yeah, it was, that sort of determines who plays. Yeah, like, sorry, it was more on who is kind of second, the second person oh, to go I, to. I, I think they, all, they, they all can play. And they're, okay. they, they tell you that, too. That they're, they're all natural shortstops. Thank yeah. You. Okay. And then my last question, um, you're approaching the 60 game mark. Are you starting to see any kind of growing pains from last year's short season as people reach that threshold of where they got to last year? Yeah. You know, that's not so much for us. Not kind of I think the, you know, the pitchers are holding up pretty well. You know, we've been, uh, you know, we've been in pretty good shape there. Again, I'll be knocked on wood on that one. Uh, they're doing fine. I think the bullpen arms are fine. You know, we've, you know, we've mapped that out a little bit, as you've noticed. And, you know, having to uh, overwork guys, uh, position players, uh, you know, I got to give the trainers, the strength guys, and the players mostly, you know, great credit for uh, their work ethic, uh, you know, staying you know, staying in great shape, watching what they eat, how they sleep, how the hydration, all the things that we have to take care of here. So, you know, everybody seems uh, pretty good as far as uh, the energy level, freshness, uh, health-wise, all, all pretty good. We've been a little bit nicked up here and there, Chuck's growing, uh, you know, obviously Trev here, uh, you know, Crohn's back, but, you know, that's, that's part of this point. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah. All right, we'll finish up with Mark Stout. Mark, go ahead. 
Hey, buddy, this week in 2011, Charlie Blackman made his debut as a Rocky, unshaven Charlie. Here we are a decade later, and he will tie Larry Walker tonight for the third most games in Rocky's history. Your comments on Charlie Blackman as a Colorado Rocky. Well, you know, saw him from the other side, uh, you know, in 2011 uh, when I was with the Padres, uh, and I've just seen Charlie get better. I think the thing that stood out for me, Mark, is, you know, a lot of guys get to the big leagues and they're, uh, you know, it, it, it takes them a while to get under their, uh, you know, to get their footing in the And we're, we're seeing that with a number of guys here. Uh, you know, Charlie got that, you know, his first three or four years. And then I think Charlie got better. I mean, he got, I thought, noticeably better, you know, at, at about the three or four year mark where he jumped up from being, you know, to, you know, big league outfielder to an all star to a guy that led the league in hitting, uh, to a guy that uh, knocked in 100 runs from the leadoff position, to a leadoff hitter that hit 39 homers. I mean, I mean he got better. Uh, he got a lot better uh, as a player, you know, in his, in his late 20s. I mean, a lot of times you don't see that. You don't see that. But uh, the thing that uh, sticks out for me more than anything, and, uh, you know, is, is the durability factor that, you know, Gary is going to tie Larry Walker. And, uh, you know, his preparation, uh, his attention to get ready, uh, his work ethic from spring training until the end of the season is, I mean, is truly, truly impressive. You know, maybe the best I've ever seen as far as a guy that prepares to play and gets ready to play each and every night and plays hard. I've had some good with Gary Merstad, I thought was tremendous in that, uh, in Anaheim. David Eckstein uh, was that way. Uh, and there's a lot of players. But Charlie, uh, just because I know him, it's truly impressive uh, to watch what he does every day and how he plays. I mean, you know, he sets a, a great example. And those of us who know him, you guys know him, uh, it's, it's special stuff.